David Cato with the Hollywood MMA Show and MMA Show News Features. And today we have the one and only Boss El Wapo Rutten. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, buddy. Did you ever imagine that MMA would be this big? I mean, you said you, you can't imagine not doing this, but did you imagine it to be this big and still growing now? You know, what I said the next day, after I knocked the guy out in Japan in my first fight, this is in 93, September 93, probably the 22nd that I said this. They said, how far do you see this going? And that was just at the time when the movie Rollerball, you know, was out. And I said, this is, this is an outlet for people. People want to know who's, there's so much anger in the world, you know, and this is kind of a, a nice outlet for the people to, do, to diffuse. You know, I think it's, uh, and I, I compare it to Rollerball, to that movie. I said, this is going to be huge. You watch. Because people, they always think, you know, who's the best scrapper in the world? Is it the boxer? Is it the kickboxer? Is it the MMA guy? Oh, yeah. you know, if you're a really good MMA guy, meaning, you know, standing wrestling on the ground, you're, you're the guy. You're, you're the toughest guy in the world. You know, a puncher or a kickboxer, they have a puncher or a kicker chance. But once it hits the ground, it's over if you never did any ground. So on the street, street fighting is the closest to mixed martial arts than to any other. So that's why I always say, and it intrigues people. They want to know who's the toughest guy. And if there was no Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, Ken and Frank Shamrock, no voice rights, no bathroom, where would MMA be right now? You know what, I would still, yeah. It, it would still be big. Would, it would, wow. Yeah, they would. You know, they, I, I truly believe these guys that you mentioned also, they have great ways to talk to the people and, and attract people like that. But I think what it really made it big, and in Japan it was already big, um, was the Force Griffin, of course. You know, uh, uh, the, the fighter, the ultimate fighter. Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner and Force Griffin. And um, that, that really put it on the map. I think that TV show is a very smart thing to do. Get the contender at the time, you go, oh, hey, let's uh, do this with MMA. And boom, man, it caught on. And that was, that was the best thing. What do you see MMA in five to 10 years from now? You know, they'll see it big. I, I, I see it really big. I don't know if they can stop it, not to unionize it or something. Maybe something is going to come there. Uh, I always had the feeling, but I always thought that uh, would have happened in the last five, six years. You know, wh what about other billionaires who come in, you know, and just spend money? Eventually, they're going to get money, you know, if you spend it. But you're going to lose a lot of money in the beginning. And that's what the UFC did also. And UFC is just doing such a great job in promoting that it was the first one. You know, for a fighter, whatever organization you're fighting for, you're not really a fighter until you fought in the UFC. That's what everybody thinks. How many times you go to a show and then the main event guy says, I hope Dana White is watching because I want to go to the UFC. I go, dude, the owner of that show is standing next to you. But uh, hey, but that, that's how it is. And, and, and the, uh, the promoters know, so it's not that bad. Now, if you weren't coaching, if you weren't commentating, if you weren't uh, being interviewed, traveling, or, or in past fighting, what would you be doing right now, or instead of fighting? Oh, I want to say video editing. I think I think uh, I would boss the video editor. Yeah, I you know what like what, what I really enjoy is like uh, watching a movie, and then you have to make that movie interesting in a minute clip. To the rest of the world. I think that's a gift to do that. So I'm not saying I will be good at it because I never do it. But at home, just what I do with iMovie and all these things, I, I enjoy doing that. If I would have had time, I would literally bring my computer to freaking Hawaii, you know, and or, or load everything down on my uh, hard drive and do it over there. And I just, it's on the sun and laying in the sun, doing nothing but video editing and all videos from the kids. I got cassettes, like de high def cassettes, boxes full with when they were like born and year old. And I would like to make a really cool clip for when they get married, you know, and you can play that. It bears them a little bit, the things that they did wrong. And what would you rather be doing? I think this is a pretty easy question. Would you rather be commentating, interviewing, fighting? It's hard. F fighting is... Coaching. Nothing, yeah, no nothing really beats fighting. <laughs> fighting is something, you know, I saw a guy, uh, on the Bellator, the, on the show, who said, you know, it's it's such a high, high, but it's all such a so low, low if you lose, and especially if you lose bad, you know, and some some guys have to just make that decision. 
but there's nothing like submitting or knocking a guy out with something that you worked on the weeks before doing that. You know, so you know it paid off what you did. That's, I guess it's like hitting the hole in one in golf. That's something you can't replicate. You know, and that's a problem a lot of fighters have when they stop, but they don't have anything to pick it up. You know, that it starts, most of them are injured, because there's a pain pill here, pain pill there. Boom, we'll start drinking. You know, I, I, was, I was crazy for a while. You know, thank God I got out of it. 50 is a number that's right around the corner for you. Yeah. 50 years old, boss. From 50 years old, I mean, you talked about 93, I might have been in elementary school when you were knocking people out. Crazy, yeah. What's, what's boss gonna do on 50? Is he gonna have like a, a one-off fight in the cage, you and Ken <laughs> Shamrock face off for you and someone else? Well, what do you wanna do when you're 50? Is there something that you have planned? Something on your agenda? No. Something that you want us to plan? Nothing. I'm, uh, birthdays, I'm not good with birthdays. I don't like getting old. I really don't want to think about that. I would tell my wife, you know, don't do anything for my 50th. She will do. I know her. That's how she is. And uh, it's, it, that's why it's just a great wife. But it's like, for me, it would be okay if it stayed under the radar. You know, 50 years old. I'm half way down then. I'm going to be 100. I told my daughters all the time. And, uh, oh, you watch. I'm going to be 100. I'm going to make it. Will we be there at your 50 year old bash? <laughs> yeah. Are we invited? Well, we'll see what my wife does. If, if my wife does the thing that she says, okay, it's just with the kids and us, you know, but maybe what I think she probably will do, we, we're going to get the bogeys here, which is a really cool place. And uh, we went off the whole place. Yeah, of course, jump by, come in. Yeah. The 50, is that something that you thought as a kid, like, there's a lot of kids Very scary. that you ever thought you would get there? No, no, I always thought I would die before 35 for some reason. I was a high. I was crazy kid, you know, always looking for danger, doing stupid stuff, climbing the highest buildings, going from treetop to treetop. I was running it all day long, all day long. I was in the forest. I was in the tree swinging from tree to tree. That was my, my thing, you know. And all the bullies, because I had a bad skin disease at the time, with the asthma, they would always try to follow me. One guy fell one time when he fell me. He, he went too high and broke, and he almost died. And uh, and that was it. From that moment on, I was safe in the trees because it was just swinging from tree to tree. In, in Holland? In Holland, yeah. There's trees you can, like Tarzan. Well, it's, it's just normal trees, like, uh, I call it a uh, pine needle tree. But I, I had a really good way to start in the top, start swinging from left to right, and I would go to the other one, and I grabbed that one. And, um, and you had someone chase you, and he missed, and he broke his yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he didn't, didn't break his arm, his head fell. It, he fell on the ground really freaking hard, was bleeding out of his ear. I remember that. I remember his brother running to his mother and uh, his head landed next to a big stone. So if he would have landed on the stone, he would have been dead, guaranteed. Uh, he was messed up, but he, uh, he was okay. Uh, and that was it. And, but I had a, a field with us. We had our, our home was at a field. It was a school here. And a big, huge field, like a soccer field big. And there was an, uh, where horses were standing also. It was a big. And then here, at the side of the field, was a row of trees. The row of trees would go to a horse stable. And then after the horse stable, I could go with the first tree, the swing. The first jump, nobody could make. I made it. Uh, I always said also that I couldn't fall. But that one, I fall one time. Almost no kids. Yeah, I was, the stick was broken off. And I fell on that stick. And it shot through here. And it came out here. Yeah, it was very freaking close. I had to literally go like, Aah! pull it out. And then I went to the doctor stitching everything up. And I remember my father came home and I said, I fell, I fell. And my father says, no, 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 don't lie to me. I said, I, but Daddy, I fell. No, it's not. You didn't fall. You told me always that you could not fall. So you didn't fall, you know. So he played the, <laughs> the opposite. And, uh, oh God, I got so angry. No, here, I got stitches. No, 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 here, look, you didn't fall. But that was my thing. I would be on the stable, I jumped down, and then I need to go to another tree. Sometimes uh, I could like four trees in a row, and then the next tree I was in, that was it. I could go to the first. The last question for today. We had, there was a comment that said that you should play Popeye in a movie. <laughs> Have you ever heard of People call you Popeye, or is that something? Do you know who Popeye is? Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it? But his pipe? No, I'm a, yeah, an angry person one time. His girlfriend really liked me, and he called me, oh, he's only a stool of Popeye, a, a tough, tough, tough looking Popeye guy. 
a Michelin guy, you know, like people, they go, my, my, my family would say, oh, hey, you got a lot of fat. <laughs> and they go, and I, I don't even gonna say <laughs> nice muscle, you know. This, this people, they will say things that make no sense. To me, I hope I don't look like Popeye now, maybe because I'm getting older. Is that gonna be your nickname now? No, no, Last no. Popeye. I would, I would like that. Nickname. It's still a Wapo. Yeah, it's gonna be a Wapo. Even at 50? Oh, I'm going to carry the name until 80 at least. <laughs> I'm going to be you watch because I'm going to get my neck treatment now. I had a bunch of neck surgeries and then I'm probably going to go, I'm going to go to Panama to the stem cells now. And I think that will really kickstart my whole arm and then I can start building more muscle around it. I think it will pull me back. I have some friends who went over there and miracle things. People in wheelchairs come, they do their whole spine, walk again after eight months. It's the most bizarre thing ever. Can you still train with that? Arizona? I just started training a week ago because they okayed it. I was uh, at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona two weeks ago. And uh, they thought it was brachial plexus. And if it's brachial plexus, you can't train from three to seven years. Okay. So I go, oh, this is going to go wrong. So they went everything. I had 17 appointments in three and a half days. And they found out, no, everything's good. Only the neck. I have arthritis in the neck. I got a fusion already, three disc fusion. It's still caught, the nerve. He says, but it's, it's going. It's working. So start training now, and that's what I did. Today, yesterday I did for the first time two sets. You know, you have to understand, I started doing six times five pounds. So it's, it's really weak. And now, this is a week later, I'm at 14 or 15 times. So, you know, I feel it, and I feel also the muscle pain. And that's a good sign. So let's see how far I can bring it back. And if it doesn't go fast enough, I gotta make that trip. And obviously you do other things to stay in shape because you're still in shape. I just run on these treadmills here and only incline. I cannot walk normal because of my knees. I have no cartilage on my kneecaps. But I put the incline all the way up and I start doing hill sprints all the time. It's very hard. Yeah, and that keeps you in shape up here too. I'm all, always like that. I'm, I'm very blessed. I didn't train since 2006, my last fight. Ask the people how many times they saw me training. I think if, if they say 20 times, in seven years, I will be a lot. I don't work out. But if you look at my brother, he looks almost the same as me. <laughs> he didn't work out for 30 years now. He smokes cigars, he's a lawyer. And last time he was here and he was walking to the beach, and I looked at his back, I actually made a picture. I look at my wife, check this out. Freaking muscles everywhere. Doesn't do anything. You know, so we're just blessed. You know, my dad, same thing. My dad has a great genetics. My whole the Ruther family, all the guys there, Nobody gains weight, nobody loses weight. I'm the same weight as when I was in 93 almost. You know, probably if I train a little bit more and more running, then I will be lighter. But my legs are getting really thick now from the running. But it's the only thing I can do. But even with your arm like that, if someone was on the street, they didn't know boss room and they were trying to bug you. Even with your arm. Yeah, you know what? That's a really cool thing to say. Nick Newell, there we go. Right. Yeah? right, and if he can do it, I still have a hand. People go like, oh, Nick, but you know, it works for him with the chokes. I go, dude, he doesn't have a hand. He can't push you away. What is he going to block? High kick, middle kick, there's a lot of stuff that's a disadvantage for him. You know, yes, he has maybe one advantage, but 20 disadvantages. And uh, he drops everybody, you know, so I guarantee you him on the street, that's that, you know, he'll drop a lot of people. And that's the same thing with me. And on the street, I use everything. I use the head, I go for the pills, <laughs> you know, so then uh, I just go to town and I keep him, keep him away from the right. My strength is still good, my uh, triceps work, so uh, not super, super duper, but I can knock somebody out with it, I think. Yeah. Well, there you have it, that's Boss Rune. He, we only had a little bit of time, and he gave us a lot of time. El Wapo, as always, for the Hollywood MMA Show, and MMA Show News, and next, Next time we meet with you, it'll be probably be a different setting because people want to ask you about tattoos, your brother, your family, but we don't have time for that because this is Boss the Coach. Boss the Coach, I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's pack day. I gotta actually put my run in now also right after this because I didn't do it. I do every once a day. And then the day that I'm off, I do now the training, the arm. And uh, I'm not allowed to do it every day because the nerves need to recoup. It's very hard, man, to do only two sets. <laughs> you want to go constantly, you want to push it, you want to start doing negatives, don't do it, you know. Don't make the muscle too tight, you're going to mess it up. And he keeps on going, he's like the energizer buddy, he keeps on going for us. 
I'm David Cano again with the Hollywood MMA Show. We're here at Elite MMA Gym in Westlake Village. OTTrainer.com. <laughs> Thank you so much. For You're very welcome. Appreciate it.